So when I started doing the tutorials for this channel, I was pretty much familiar with all of the consoles that I was making tutorials for. And while I am comfortable with systems that I still haven't covered yet, I did decide to branch out and get into a little bit of an uncomfortable area that I'm not necessarily used to. I brought this up on one of the other tutorials for the European computers, but I primarily just did DOS. I never ventured out into the Japanese or European computer market until recently. So I was pleasantly surprised when the Atari ST was actually a pleasant surprise to set up. Hi, my name is Brad, and today in Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to get the Atari ST up and running in a launch box and how it integrates with the system. Every tutorial generally starts off with adding some games. So let's go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. I've got all my ROM files here in the .ipf file format. Now you may have other file formats that work. Uh, personally for me, IPFs were working literally a minute ago. So navigate to where you have your ROMs in the add files section. Go ahead and control A to highlight them all. Click open. Click next for the platform. Let's click the drop down and click the Atari ST. Next, the default emulator should actually come up blank unless you've tried adding the Atari ST before. If you don't have Atari downloaded, go ahead and click add. So let's download Atari. Now I will include all of these links in the description below as always. So we are going to download the latest version of Atari, which was last updated on September 14th, 2015. So we'll click 1.90. And uh, you can download the version of Hatari for your system. However, LaunchBox does only work with Windows. So obviously you should be picking the Windows packages. If you have a 32-bit version of Windows, go ahead and download this package here. If you have a 64-bit version of Windows, go ahead and download this package here. The Hatari 190 Windows 64 for 64-bit OSs. Click it and download it to the location of your choice. Once downloaded and extracted, you'll have a folder similar to mine, minus this extra folder here. We'll, we'll cover that in a second. So over here, back in the edit emulator page, go ahead and add Hatari as the emulator name. Browse to your EXE for Hatari. Go to the associated platforms, add Atari ST to the associated platforms. Just double click an empty space, add the name, make sure that the names are going to match. So when we had to designate a platform name earlier and we chose Atari ST from the drop down menu, we left it at the default name. Make sure that you put the default name in here or whatever it is that you chose. Go ahead and check the default emulator box and then click OK. No special command lines, at least as far as I could tell. You, there may be command lines to put it in full screen automatically or whatnot, but uh, we'll also cover settings in a minute. Click Next. Use the files in their current location. Uh, we're going to download from the LaunchBox Games database and from Wikipedia. Next, this is the new image downloader in LaunchBox. This is only in the beta release channel right now, and it's not exactly perfect. If you do want to update to the beta and check out the new image categories, please make sure that you create a backup of your images folder and then update to the beta. Even if it's out of beta and you're watching this in the future, and this has already made its way into the stable release, we're currently on 6.2 beta 5 so if you're on launch box 6.3 6.4 6.5 uh, you've had this feature and you've probably seen it already but if you're watching this the day after or the day I put it up this is fairly new like I said create a backup of your images folder and then go ahead and re-download all your images and now that sounds daunting but unfortunately that's how we kind of have to handle it right now because the way the images work has been changed we just need to re-download everything but of course as you can see we have way more categories and thus more image types this should satisfy most everyone's needs to have all the media available 
Now, the tiered image system doesn't accompany this update quite yet, but that will be coming soon, so that way you can choose which to show first and then in which order to then go down the list to fill in the holes. So this is it. Uh, uncheck what you don't want, check what you do want, and then click next. And as always, it's going to log you into your Emu Movies account. We're going to go ahead and select all and then next, next. And this is the list of games to import. Now, if there's a name in here that you see really quick that you want to change, maybe uh, it imported the name a little bit wrong, you can go ahead and double click the name box here like you do in the associated platforms list to edit the name. You can also just press delete to remove a game instead of importing it. And this will just skip importing it for this process. Go ahead and click finish when you're done. Once all your media is downloaded, and as you can see, unfortunately, there is not a whole lot of art for the Atari ST. Unfortunately, that's just kind of how it goes. This is, uh, we're starting to get into the more niche systems, so to speak. Now, that's not to say that some of you out there don't have beautiful looking libraries of images for these more niche systems. And if you do, please upload your images to the Launchbox Games database for everyone to enjoy. Uh, and you'll be able to upload all that media and metadata to the Launchbox Games database from within Launchbox very soon. Back over on the Hitari website, there are a couple of links that you should be aware of. The first is the front page here. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see where it says Emu TOS. So the Atari emulator does need an Atari ST BIOS file, but these are called TOS files. So if you search Atari TOS, you're probably going to find what you're looking for, right? Somebody has created an open version of these BIOS files. And as you can see, you can even launch the OS, so to speak. Now, this is the more basic version of the OS. I believe that these BIOS are based on version 1.02, which if I recall, the BIOS go up to version two and, and later, but uh, these will work fairly well. Now, Hatari does come with these BIOS pre-included, but, if you look at the download page, this was last updated 19 hours ago. And as I shown you, Hatari was last updated in 2015. So these bios are technically more updated than the ones included in the Atari emulator. So go ahead and click download. You'll download the archive to this folder. And I went ahead and extracted the folder to here. Inside is four files, the doc folder, the image file, the SIM file, and the text file. In the text file is some useful information. So if you are having compatibility issues, this would be something to read over and look through. It has a lot of extra information in it as well. Speaking of compatibility and issues and troubleshooting, the Hatari documentation and the Hatari links pages on this website are also full of great information. So if you have any questions, it may have already been answered on these pages. So please keep that in mind, specifically the compatibility list here for the Atari emulator. Now this will help you set up MIDI for the ST and games and demos and applications and whatnot. And it'll actually tell you what is and what's not working. And as you can see, this list is pretty small. You'll also even notice that some games like Garfield's Winter Tale require a specific BIOS file. So do keep that in mind. So Garfield Winter's Tale would not actually run with the 1.02 BIOS file. Unfortunately, there's no really easy way to uh, deal with that sort of thing, uh, except for manually switch it in the emulator. Now there can be methods. You can create a couple of different config files for Hatari to have it point at different TOS files if you would like, but uh, you, if so the game's not working, it might just be better just to play around with the settings, look at the compatibility, see what you can find. But unfortunately, this is one of those systems that 
is not great for the amount of games that you can play, at least on the Emu TOS. Now, if you find official Atari ST TOS files out there, the performance and compatibility for those can actually be a lot higher. So do keep that in mind. If you are having compatibility issues, finding the legitimate sources out there may also help your gaming along. So let's right click Deliverance, open Hatari. The window is a little bit small for me, but that's okay for right now for our purposes. So let's go ahead and press F12 to open our Hatari main menu. This is where you can change a lot of your settings. Under system, I've kept it as ST and 68,000 for the CPU type. It does seem that the Emu TOS does require certain settings to stay the same. I was able to change the CPU clock to 32 megahertz. I was able to check the real-time clock emulation and it doesn't seem to have failed on me. Uh, I did try changing the CPU type or the machine type and Hatari kind of yelled at me and said, this isn't going to work. So we're switching it back for you. So if you do make a change that your Emu TOS doesn't like, it should tell you and reset the value for you. Back in the main menu under under memory, this is set to one megabyte. I've tried 14 megabytes, but it seems to be resetting on its own. Let's click on the ROM next and where it says TOS image. This is where I was telling you, you can browse to different images. Now, if one doesn't work for one game, you can just pop in here, select the different image file and you should be good to go. So here's the folder that we downloaded. And then there are the two files that are most important, the IMG file and the SYM file. Now the readme text does explain each of the differences, but let's go ahead and just use the image file. That should be the one that's going to work the best. Click OK. Should now show you the path to your TOS file. You can adjust the Hatari screen and Atari screen if you would like at a later time. Under hard disks, if you would like to mess around with the OS or saving directly into it like it was an actual system, go ahead and click browse. And in your Hatari folder is an HD image. 80 file. This is an 80 megabyte virtual hard drive disk image that Hatari will use for various different features with the OS. One more menu would be the joysticks and keyboard options here, but let's go to the joystick here at the top. You can change the type of joystick setup that you're using. For me, I'm using ST joystick one. No, this was disabled for me. I've since enabled use real joystick and my PS4 controller, which Windows thinks is an Xbox controller, thanks to input mapper has automatically been selected here. If it's not selected, try to press the arrow buttons until your controller pops up. You can also enable auto fire if you want, and the keys are automatically defined for your controller. Once you've made your changes, make sure to hit save config. In this folder, just go ahead and click OK. It should automatically name your config to Hatari.cfg. Once you've made your changes, let's go ahead and test the game. Now, I'll be frank, and during my test runs, when I would launch a game, I never got this window to pop up or anything like that. And I never booted directly into the operating system, but it did notice during that boot screen that it did have some information. So it automatically will boot the image if you press or hold X here at this white screen. And it wasn't doing this for me, like literally right before <laughs> I did this tutorial. So, I'll, you know, I'm just being honest with you guys. These are unscripted and things like this happen. So I guess if that you come across it, that is a, a way to fix it. But it's not ideal. I, I will grant you that. But that is essentially how you get the Atari ST up and running. And my controller should work and everything. Music should work. It may not sound the best and you may not have MIDI music per se, but it's up and running, guys. And uh, also, the games may take a really long time to load, so uh, keep that in mind. So that's it. That's how you get the Atari ST system up and running with Atari in LaunchBox. My name is Brad. If you guys liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up if it helped you get the Atari ST up and running in LaunchBox. 
If you'd like to see more tutorials in the future, subscribing would be beneficial and we would greatly appreciate it. If you like the sound of my voice and want to hear me less tired, the link to my description, the link to my channel will be in the description below. I'm a little bit tired, so if the edit sounds a little bit off on this one, guys, I do apologize. I could not get some sleep last night. I do gaming content on my channel and that sort of thing so that that sounds like your cup of tea please give me a watch as well if I didn't cover anything in this tutorial please leave us a comment in the comment section below Jason and myself would be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys may have remember freaks and geeks to play more games and I'll see you next time have a good day